welcome back to the next installment of the Mighty Cat Bulldozer Repair Series. I am your host, JMP. Joining us today is the Hercules ZXB-3. And what it would like to have done is some cleaning and maintenance that's long overdue. We've got some exciting news for this project. Today, I officially ordered the last part, the last remaining part. <laughs> a piston ring. Now, it took a while to, to find. It was not the most common size combination. Uh, 67.4 uh, millimeter in uh, British units, other parts of the world units, and it's supposed to be 330 seconds as far as uh, width. So that combination is kind of uncommon. Everything had a thinner ring or it was a larger bore. So I got the closest ring that I could. It's slice, slightly bigger bore than it should be and I'm gonna have to gap it to fit. And I'm assuming that whatever bore has the, the largest diameter is gonna get that second ring. It's not critical, it's the scraper ring. It's not the compression ring that I need to replace. But what is critical here is valves and sealing surfaces. Now when I pull up one of the old uh, exhaust valves, you can see that that's just plain not usable. There's no help in that guy. So, luckily, fresh from 1951, still new in the package, see, service A4 of 1951, still in uh, Cosmoline, Brand new. I'll unwrap that quick here. If you could smell this right now, it's just. Oh, I love that smell. It's probably not good for you, but that is a preservative. And this is the first time this valve has seen the light of day since it was put in that package. These are surplus parts. Uh, the military used. This engine in generators, welders, pumps, various other types of equipment. I'm not an expert on the subject, but the guy that has these old surplus parts uh, shared some information with me. So, the process is as follows. These valve seats were just trashed. Here, let me, uh, there's an intake. That, this is the exhaust, this is the exhaust valve right here. Wait, yep, this is the exhaust valve right here that I had a bunch of uh, trouble with and had to uh, do some welding and such in that, uh, I think it was the second or the third video. So this seat had, you know, rust pitting that was real deep in there. And you can see that it, it looks pretty halfway decent now. So, in order to do that process, I had to do some, uh, you know, hand machine work. And this is a cheap kit. This is uh, from the jungle store, made in Mexico or Taiwan, I'm not sure. But I knew that these, would at least be accurate and maybe I'd have to do some uh, machining on the other parts and fixtures. So this comes out of the box at seven millimeters and I was able to chuck this whole assembly in my lathe and bring it down to the correct size of the valve stem uh, minus a thousandths or so just to not beat up the guide. Then 
these cutters enabled you to do the uh, ceiling surface and the, uh, the second angle, which is much steeper. So I've got this uh, exhaust valve done right here. And you can see that I've lapped it and I've got pretty good contact. The way that I'm checking contact is by uh, putting Sharpie marker on the valve seat, adding a little bit of uh, grinding compound, and when you have full contact, it will erase the Sharpie from the valve and the seat. So that's where we're at with the seats. The seats can be fixed. So moving forward, the next thing to do is to get these exhaust ports all cleaned out because they're just, I know it doesn't look that bad, but they're, they're pretty grimy. And the last thing I want to have, have happen is chunks inside of the intake port these are actually shared. There's a Siamese port for uh, both intakes on two cylinders. I don't want stuff from in there going in there. So that's the mission at hand right now. I'm cleaning these intake and exhaust ports. I'm going to work my way down. Uh, second thing on the agenda is removing these studs. And the reason I'm going to remove the studs is so that I can properly clean this surface with a machine stone, fine and coarse. That will make this ceiling surface like new, really shiny, pretty, whatever. After that is done and all these are clean, I'll continue cutting the seats. I have four brand new exhaust valves and I'm going to try to use all of the intake valves because they're, they're in pretty good shape and the seats are in pretty good shape. So I'm going to see what they make for contact when I lap them and we'll go from there. The cylinders, I've uh, already honed them a bit. The, uh, the worst cylinder really isn't all that bad. A little bit of pitting, nothing crazy. I'm gonna go a little bit more on that, but the other ones, they're in good shape. For what this engine needs to do and how it probably ran in the past with the condition of things, it's gonna be fine. The lifter galley here a little bit rusty and grimy so that needs to be addressed as well now I would clean the whole exterior of the engine but that doesn't really make sense right now this is the important part of the engine valves cylinders after I'm done with that I'll address the condition of the crankshaft and the bearings the uh, connecting rod bearings and the crankshaft main bearings are going to need to be just smoothed out not really taking any material away just want to get the grit and grime out of there and get them in nice usable condition the oil passages inside of the block will need to be cleaned and uh, man we're going to be just about ready to start reassembling this at that point so I'm probably going to end up painting the engine because it's going to be clean and degreased and all apart. So uh, that'll be fun. I'd like to have this put back together in a sense where I'm not going to need to touch it for a long time. So I'm going to get the time lapse going and do some, you know, start and stop video. Uh, it's kind of a boring process, but... It is what it is, somebody's got to do it, and I'm the guy with the camera. 
So let's go. I've already taken out this stud and I tried it. I tried it cold. It was not having it. So I'm going to heat it up with the inductive heater. And my goal here is just to, you know, get it warm about 200 or so. That's going to help expand the cast iron just a little bit. I'm going to wait, you know, 20 seconds or so. This will cool down a bit. Yeah, it's about 200. I'm going to use a uh, stud extractor. This is one of those kind of things where if this breaks, it's real bad. But having it in the way, it's also real bad. So I'm just going to ease on it. I know how much it takes to break a 3 8 stud and these things are high quality. So I'm just going to ease on it. And when it wants to go, it's going to go. There it goes. So it took a minute for the heat to just kind of radiate in there. And I'm only putting about maybe, I don't know, 30 foot pounds on it. And it just moved a bit. So I'm just tugging on it. And there it goes. no damage you gotta have a lot of patience with this kind of stuff I'm not just gonna jump on out of there and when you rush things, sometimes you end up spending more time fixing what you uh, could have easily done. Now, some people might say, well, why didn't you use penetrating oil? There's really no point, because it can't get in there. Just to show you, this next one I will. It's on there. It's empty, but it's on there. While I'm at it, I'm going to heat this one because the way that this works, the stud is hot. 
the stud is then going to heat the block. The block is going to expand, the stud cools. The block takes longer to cool. Hot. Not the best angle, is it? So I'm not just ripping on it. I'm kind of putting tension and then bouncing. There it goes. Here's a handy tip about vice grips. Put the lower jaw facing the way that you want to turn. It binds that way. If you put vice grips like this, they slip every time. Also, buy old rusty vice grips from swap meets. The ones that say USA, they're better. So this one has had more time for the heat to soak in. Let's see if it gives us an easier time. There it goes. So like if you just pulled on that, it might go but it also might break. Bouncing on it, bouncing on it like that will cause torsion right here. And the torsion transmits all the way through. And that might be all it takes to get those threads to break free. Gotta put her in forward here. Give it a whack. And that, see how this works? I'm sure plenty of you guys out there have used one of these. But in reverse, this comes down and it's an eccentric. So it grabs on and the tighter you pull, the more it pulls. You can see uh, it's got some miles on it. Probably time to get a new one, but it's still doing the job. forgot to show no oil in there so penetrating oil it works but it really works the best when you apply heat and it creates some space the rule of thumb is that for every inch of bore you have you can get four thousandths expansion at 250 degrees Fahrenheit or 250 degrees of, of change. 
So it could be negative 50 and you go to 200, you're gonna get four thousandths. That's steel. Aluminum is a little bit more. Anyway, here we are. So I'm gonna take my machine stone here. Actually, I'm gonna take this bearing scraper right here and I'm gonna get the surface, you know, free of the gasket first. This just would have been a, a hassle with the studs in. get this surface free of gasket material. This tool here, a three-sided knife or a bearing scraper or whatever you want to call it, it's handy, real handy. really doesn't damage the uh, the good steel but it will remove whatever is on the surface starting to see the machining marks and what I'm noticing right now is I've got Got some edges. So, I'm gonna need to take a file and go along this edge. This will remove burrs. file will do a better job. This will do it as well. One down here. And here that there's a there's a high spot down here. see the machining marks starting to show up. You could scrape this with a razor blade all day long and never actually get to the true surface.
down here there's some build up. really liking this stuff you pay for it a little bit but it's got this super nice straw really helpful might ask well can't that make this crooked can't you screw it up no not really because this is flat and what it's doing is it's transferring from one area to the next as you go along you'd have to run it like this or do something crazy and then you could screw it up Makes pretty quick work of it, and you know you wouldn't want to take sandpaper to it. Just look, that's the original surface right there. I can see I'm still a little bit low here, and on the other end. So we'll focus a little bit down there. There you have it. That's a nice surface. So I'll do the same thing on the manifold and uh, the actual deck surface here. Show you that next. And deck surface is not all that bad at all. It does have a little bit of lows here and there. I've already gone over it just a little bit, but it could be better. So we're going to take the same method. might think well why don't you just take it to the machine shop and have it decked you really don't want to do that I'll show you in a second this block has been assembled with the head bolts torqued for many years it's been probably overheated a number of times 
So the pressure that these are pulling the block up towards the head, because the head gasket, it's got a relief around these holes. It actually tries to pull the block material upwards. And you can see how it's highlighted in certain areas. So if you brought it to the machine shop and you had it decked, it's really taking away material that doesn't need to go away. This can take down the high spots and get this perfectly even without taking away material. I'm gonna work on this front surface here a little bit. One thing you always gotta be aware of is burrs. If you've got a burr or a raised edge, it can throw you off. Oh. We'll hit this again. As you can see, the, the high spots are starting to spread out. Now, I don't have to get this perfect, but I could. You can see this intake valve is a little bit low. Right here, there must be a water passage. Or no. Jeez. I'm gonna have to look at the head gasket, but I wonder if the head gasket was actually on upside down. Cause that shouldn't be there. Well, it is now. All right, I'm gonna go one more time and call that good. All right, let's see what we ended up with here. I'm pretty content with this. I remember what it looked like before and This is a world of improvement. You say that's pretty good? I bet if I went one more round, you can see there's still a low spot down here over here yeah we'll go one more time <laughs> 
Let's see what we can do. All right, now for the real trick part. I'm gonna go from the coarse side of the stone to the fine side of the stone. And what that's gonna do is it's going to develop all of the areas that are actually perfectly straight. It'll shine those up like a mirror and the areas that are still low will be dull. Kind of feels like you're sliding a suction cup on it because of the oil. So it gives you a good feel of what the surface actually has on it. Yeah, right, right there, there's, there's something. I'm assuming it's this uh, contaminant out on the edge, staining. Is this necessary? No, this, this would seal no matter what I did, but sure is satisfying. And I figured it would be a, an interesting thing to show. You know, most modern, Mechanics these days would take a cookie wheel to this and uh, think they did something and uh, they would be wrong. Still something going on over here. I have to get a new rag. I'd say that looks pretty good. What do you think? Yeah. Let's move on to cleaning out the schmutz in here. Well, now that we've got the deck surfaces pretty clean, I'm gonna improve the angle here. So you guys can get a better look at the action. And I'm going to switch my I'm already equipped here. I'm going to take this wire brush, knotted wire brush, and squeeze on down through here and I'm going to try and get the worst of the, the rust out. Keep in mind I haven't done these seats yet so I'm not super concerned about
definitely uh, definitely improve matters here. We're gonna get them real nice. got a substantial improvement here in the condition of these ports. And you can rest assured that I didn't take a little extra time and make these ports a little bit nicer than they need to be. None of that occurred at all. Wait, no, it did. I mean, we're going to be, we're going to be pushing dirt at you know, four plus miles per hour with this sucker. Might as well spill some on there too. this all a little bit of a clean and give you a look. happy with that it's not perfect but it's a far cry from where it was so I think the last thing I'm gonna do tonight is I'm gonna rough cut all these valves and I'll show you how that works this guy right here cuts the 
um, the bottom angle on the valve seat. So we're going to start there. for my one and three sixteenths cutter and this one's gonna go a little bit rough Flip the same one over the flat side. I'm just going to make sure. nice and clean. This is not a precision set up but it's going to get the job done it gets it close enough that you can finish the job by So I just ran a quite a bit larger cutter to get rid of the ridge around them. So I uh, think I'm gonna throw on or throw in a couple valves and start lapping and see where we're at.
I can even see that it's not hitting me over there yet. Injector. Why? If I turn the valve. had a pretty successful night here working on the Hercules engine. We got nearly all the valves in and lapped. Uh, the intake valves are they're not great but I think we're gonna go ahead and use them. They're a little bit thin but they seem to lap pretty well, seal pretty well. Exhaust valves are new.
you know, it's not going to be a perfect engine, but it's going to be, it's going to be good for what it needs to do. It's not looking to work another 50 years, or at least I'm not looking to use it for another 50 years. It'll probably wear me out in about two, but it's just going to, it's going to run again. And this machine is going to come back to life and what a thing it's going to be to see. So hope you follow along. Hope you join in. Hope you come with. And I'll see you in the next one.